Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Nicola. Um, I, again, as Philip said, the, the work we've been doing in, in uh, the Fiscal Affairs Department in the IMF on this topic is very much work in progress. Uh, this is an area, as, as Philip suggested, where there's been very little uh, work done in comparison, for example, with the private sector, where there's been a lot of work done on the organization of corporations and so forth in the public sector, particularly in ministries like finance, very little work has been done on this. Um, a little bit of work has picked up uh, in the last few years. Uh, Philip also mentioned the study which the World Bank recently published on central finance agencies, which is looking at the experience of some developing countries. Uh, Philip and I published a paper in the recently published uh, International Handbook, where we had we launched yesterday. Uh, and, and I wanted to talk today a little bit about some of the work that uh, the IMF is doing at the moment in the Fiscal Affairs Department. I mean, we're often asked in FAD to uh, go and advise uh, governments on the organization of their ministries of finance. Uh, a year ago I was in Kenya providing some advice on a new structure for the <coughs> National <coughs> Treasury, and we're going back there next month uh, <laughs> to look again at, at that work. Uh, we've also advised in countries like the Maldives, in Peru, Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, I've done some work this year in Cyprus uh, on the organization of the Ministry of Finance. So, so in, in some countries where the conditions are right uh, and where uh, the, ministry, the minister really wants to look at his organization, you know, we're often asked for our advice on that. And this is not easy to, to give, I can, I can tell you, because the circumstances vary hugely from country to country. Um, we've also been doing a little bit of work in the IMF on what we call a capability assessment tool, which is looking at trying to get some measures of how you'd measure the capability of uh, ministries of finance and, and also central banks. What are, the, what are the factors that you should take into account in doing that? And I'll say a little bit about that, but again, that's very much work in progress. And, some pilots on that are planned. And we're also preparing a working paper at the moment uh, in FAD on, on this topic with a few colleagues of mine. We're looking at some, mainly some developed countries, uh, the UK and France, Germany, Finland, also Turkey. So we're looking at some, some more advanced countries there. So uh, as Philip also said, um, existing diagnostic tools like PIFA take some sort of account of uh, the effectiveness of organizations, but they're mainly looking at the efficiency of processes rather than organizational structures themselves. So th there is a gap here, I think, in what we can understand from these diagnostic <coughs> tools about, about, uh, about the functions that ministries of finance carry out and about how well those are carried out. Now, I'm not going to go through this entire presentation. That would take me far too long, so I'm going to skip a lot of these slides and just move on to one or two which I think uh, are uh, interesting. The organization in its environment, this is really a reflection of what we've been saying this morning about the important non-technical factors, the institutional environment which uh, determines uh, the quality of public financial management. And similarly, organizations can be broken down into their formal and informal uh, <coughs> subsystems the capability of an organization is really related to the inputs that come into it, the organization itself, which is a mixture of these formal and informal structures, and then what comes out of it in terms of policy advice, the national budget uh, documents, and so forth. Uh, this is taken from, a, this chart is taken from a, a textbook on organizational theory, to looking at the private sector companies, but I think it also applies to to government organizations like the Ministry of Finance. So, so the, basic, uh, <coughs> the basic conclusion from this, and this is a bit like Philip's elephant, I think, okay. that this, these are very complica complicated structures. And when we try and look at this more, more uh, specifically, we're looking at very specific pieces. We're looking at how the, the number, of, number of departments that a ministry has, the quality of its staff, the number of staff it has, and so on. But that's not the whole issue. And so the organization is affected by a lot of factors which are quite difficult to measure in practice. The definition of capability we've been using in our work in the fund is that it 
relates the outputs of a Ministry of Finance to the inputs, taking account of all the factors that make up the organization, the formal structures, the legal framework, the staff, the business processes, the information and communication systems, and these informal relationships that also exist, the culture, the power, the politics, and so on, which affect the organization too. Now, just to move forward a little bit, uh, let me skip these, these sli slides and just move on. Um, the, Philip was mentioning the uh, different kinds of functions of the Ministry of Finance, regulatory, analytical, and coordination he mentioned. We also think it's very important in our work to distinguish between uh, transactional functions which are those functions like executing the budget, carrying out procurement transactions, um, issuing securities <coughs> to, to sustain the debt, the debt strategy of the country and so on, and the policy-oriented policy functions. And one interesting characteristic is that in, in developed countries, in advanced countries, you'll find that the policy functions occupy a much higher proportion of the staff time and the resources of the organization than they do in developing countries. For example, in, in France, it's over 50%. In the UK, about 70%. Whereas in developing countries, in Kenya, when we did the work a year ago, we discovered it was only around 12% of the staff in the ministry were engaged in policy-related functions. So this is a kind of evolutionary process which goes on in many countries uh, that over time, uh, a lot of the transactional work that ministries of finance carry out is offloaded and is done either through line ministries or uh, arm's length agencies like a debt management office or a procurement agency uh, or, an, or a, a revenue collection authority. So uh, this is, I think, an important distinction. And just to uh, illustrate again uh, some of the functions that we think are, 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 are core finance functions on the policy function side, uh, macro forecasting, fiscal policy formulation, international economic relations, tax policy, procurement policy, policy on accounting, intergovernmental financial relations. This is a huge issue, for example, in Kenya, where we're going next month, where they need to build up their capacity to manage uh, the new county structures. Uh, in some countries, the regulation of banks and financial institutions is also a key role for the Ministry of Finance. And the management of public assets, including state enterprises and public-private partnerships. And, and then on the other side, you can see the transactional function. So in the, in the work we've been doing, we've been trying to distinguish between these two categories of, of function, the policy functions and the transactional functions. Um, functions and size of ministries of finance vary <coughs> enormously. I mean, <coughs> the smallest I've seen are uh, around 100 staff. Uh, in Rwanda, I think it's 110, for example, where they've cut back the <laughs> central civil service to almost ludicrously small proportions. Uh, whereas in uh, some other countries like France, uh, uh, the ministry has well over 100,000 staff a lot of which are engaged in more transactional type functions. So the, the functions carried out by the ministries in different countries vary enormously, uh, and the size of the ministries varies enormously. Now, of course, there are reasons to explain these differences, and I, I won't go into these today, but I simply wanted to point out that these aren't similar entities. They're very different in their complexity and the functions they carry out, uh, and in a number of staff they, they employ. In Cyprus, for example, uh, the accounting side of the Ministry of Finance is by far the most important. They have about 250 accountants, but they only have about five people who actually are responsible for the, the policy on the budget, and about two people who are responsible for fiscal policy and macroeconomic forecasting. So there's a huge difference there between uh, those core policy functions and, and government accountants who are doing the basic processing of transactions uh, in, in that country. 
Um, this is a little chart which shows what's happened in some countries over the last 20 or 25 years. This is mainly related to countries that you might call Anglophone countries, and these are advanced countries I'm talking about here, countries like the UK, or New Zealand, Australia, and Canada, to some extent the United States. Uh, Francophone countries, the picture is, is, is somewhat different, though some of these trends <coughs> are also occurring. Um, and here I distinguish between the traditional approach, which was based on uh, a segmentalist culture, a, very, a lot of silos in the Ministry of Finance. If you look at the old organizational structures, you see lots of silos, <laughs> vertical silos, which communicated with each, each other to a greater or lesser extent. Uh, short-term focus, generally speaking, of focusing on transactions and the accuracy and quality of transactions. Rather closed, introspective uh, societies. I remember when I worked in the British Treasury, it was an incredibly secretive organization. It went to utmost lengths to ensure any information was not disclosed outside its doors. Things have changed somewhat now, but very secretive. Uh, central controls. Uh, and direct controls on expenditure. Uh, very low accountability and transparency, e except for certain documents that had to be published, such as the budget, very little transparency in, in other respects. A narrow strategic focus. Uh, focus almost exclusively on the central government, very little account taken of the general government or the wider public sector. And, and fairly large formal organizations in, in some of these countries. The emerging approach, uh, which is uh, where we are today, more or less, uh, is a more integrated culture, an emphasis on horizontal communications. Uh, a lot of ministries of finance now have management boards chaired by the permanent secretary or sometimes the minister, which discuss policy issues and coordinate the provision of advice and work across the ministry and set, and set priorities. Uh, focus on policy issues, much more emphasis on fiscal risk an analysis and management within the organization and in terms of the wider uh, public sector. Uh, much more open and communicative, decentralized control environments, focus on monitoring developments rather than controlling, more accountability and transparency broader strategic perspectives and, and a, a more holistic view of public finances and a, and a smaller and more flexible organizations. So a lot of changes have occurred in the last 25 years. And if you like, I suppose you could say that the left side of this chart now represents what many developing countries, where, the, where they still are. And so you could say that over time, these are likely to move towards the right side of the chart. And some, some of these countries are now beginning to do that. For example, in Kenya, when I was last year, they were quite interested in improving horizontal communications, get a, getting some uh, more coordination between the director generals in terms of policy making priorities and so forth. So change is beginning to happen. A lot of the work we're now doing in developing countries is moving these countries gradually from the left side of this uh, chart to, to the right hand side. Just quickly moving on. Um, why do Ministry for Science change their organizations? We've been looking at this a little bit, and I think there are a number of factors here. Changes in political power. Uh, I'm, I was very conscious of uh, Mrs. Thatcher when she was Prime Minister, who uh, had a deep sus suspicion of the civil service who wanted to impose the private sector paradigm on government ministries, including the Ministry of Finance, and a large influx of political advisers because of the suspicion of the, uh, the regular civil service. External forces have been very important in, in some countries. Accession to the European Union, for example, for the new member countries has been a very important development. Uh, access to other economic unions in Africa, for example, WEMU, uh, have also been affecting the way that ministries carry out their business and the kind of work they do. Uh, 
uh, response to economic crisis. Uh, New Zealand is a classic example of what will galvanize the reforms in the public sector there, changes in the constitution in South Africa, and now I think in, in Kenya are, are also impinging upon the organization of the Ministry of Finance. Changes in PFM processes, the introduction of computerization, <coughs> financial management systems, impact of new public management ideas, uh, and so on. And also uh, pressure from external agencies like uh, the IMF and the World Bank, uh, parliaments and, and, uh, non and, uh, and NGOs as well, to make policy more transparent and open. Um, Two more minutes, I must rush on. Okay, let, let me just say, uh, on, on the way they change in the UK, uh, there's been a whole raft of changes over the past uh, 30 or 40 years, some three or four comprehensive reorganizations of the, the Treasury, the, the Finance Ministry, uh, reorganization of individual departments in the Ministry in response to new developments most recently the global crisis where the work on financial regulation had to be increased dramatically and a lot of incremental changes as well. So it's much easier, by the way, in countries which uh, have open governance systems where ministries are not constrained uh, in changing their organizational structure. It's much diff more difficult uh, in countries, the continental European countries, for example, where structures are set by, by, by law, and where there's much <coughs> less discretion available to the individual ministries like finance to change their organization. So this is, a, this is an issue uh, that needs to be taken into account. Just moving on very quickly, uh, the capability assessment, what we're trying to do here is to measure uh, whether the particular <coughs> aspects of capability uh, are achieving certain objectives, and, and we're using a kind of heat map system, green representing that they've met certain benchmarks or standards, yellow or orange that they're moving towards that but have not met it yet, and red that they definitely haven't met it. And we're trying to measure the capability of organizations according to a number of criteria. This, this just gives an illustration in relation to a budget department does, does, it, does it deliver the objectives and outputs that it's required to do and on time, like the budget documents, the medium-term expenditure frameworks? Does it have the right functions uh, uh, to carry out those, th that work? Does it, does it analyze the budget proposals according to uh, reasonably satisfactory methodology? Does it have a, a good structure in terms of flexibility, in terms of uh, remuneration, in incentives to remain? Does it have a sufficient staff? Are the communications good? Does it have the right kind of skills in terms of e economists, finance specialists, and so on? Uh, does it have an appropriate calendar to organize its work? Are working groups ex in existence which allow it to discuss these issues with other parts of the ministry and with line ministries, and does it receive external support? So we're trying to break down these uh, functions into certain components and to measure the extent to which uh, they deliver against certain desired benchmarks. So this is one idea we, we've been working with. I think I better stop here. Uh, just briefly a few conclusions. I think there's no single model of a capable Ministry of Finance. They all differ hugely, but there are some general principles that they should follow, like they should focus on core finance functions, for example, and not do extraneous things, as some countries do. When I was in the British Treasury in the 90, early 90s, they were running a catering organization. <laughs> and we said, is it really a core <laughs> finance function for, to run a catering organization? The answer was no, so the catering organization was privatized. And that was, so I think, are the functions core finance functions? Uh, things have been changing, and I think this indicates a direction in which developing countries may go in the coming years. We're doing some work within FAD to, to analyze whether there are differences between different categories 
of country, Anglophone countries, Francophone countries, Scandinavian countries, and so on. I mean, are there significant differences in the structure of ministries of finance between those kind of entities? Uh, and what kind of advice should we give to developing countries? They may not be in a position where a radical reorganization of the Ministry of Finance is, 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 is timely for them. It may be better for some countries to look at specific functions, strengthening macro fiscal forecasting or analysis, for example, building up capacity in the budget department, rather than looking at the whole uh, organizational structure. But that very much, I think, is a judgment about the country specifics. So I'll stop there. I'm sorry to run over a little bit, Nicola. All right. thank, thank you very much, Richard. And I, I think um, it, it's fascinating work that you've described to us. I mean, I think this is um, really getting, uh, bringing um, some new insight, or at least bringing together um, things that I think that perhaps are w people are working on, but we're perhaps bringing them together into a form that we can actually uh, use okay. and and complement other ways in which we're engaging on the PFM reform agenda. Yeah. Um, and with that, if I might pass over to K Kenneth.